Hello, this is Brian. It's, a, it's an early afternoon, Sunday, March 7th, 2021. I am near Sulphur Springs Road here in the Angeles National Forest, about an elevation of 5,250, 5,300 feet above sea level. And just kind of walking around this wash here, the PCT actually just cuts right on the other side of this wash before you get up that berm to the to where the the old paved road is but uh just really nice tall jeffrey pines down here and yeah i'm double checking to make sure these are jeffrey pines checking the cones because i'm not gonna go as much with the vanilla smell anymore as being the indicator i'm gonna keep talking about the cones being the clue and what i mean is uh generally much larger cones and uh, the uh, undersides are not much different col differently colored than the upper sides of the cones. Ponderosa you notice a big difference between the top of the cone scale being lighter and the bottom of the cone scale being darker. That's one way. I'm reading on tchester.org Tom Chester, botanist here in Southern California, is made it pretty simple. When I smell the bark of these trees, very delightful, very vanilla smell. But I guess Jeffrey's supposed to have a stronger vanilla smell, smell than uh, Ponderosa, when Ponderosa actually has it. I'm just loving this area. Beautiful, tall, beautiful Jeffrey pines here. Yeah, not one ponderosa. So we've got a little uh, single leaf pinion sapling over here. There we go, a little pinus monophylla. Young single leaf pinion. It's a reminder that the desert's not far away. Pinions, uh, pinions usually grow closer to the desert edge. Not necessarily in the desert, though they do grow on higher desert mountain peaks but pinions are usually a reminder that the high desert's not far away. And it's really not. Mileage-wise, it's probably a short hop, skip, and jump over, uh, over this way. So you can tell parts of this area are very arid. This side, it's all chaparral. Down in here, we got, we're lucky we got conifers because of the, uh, the wash here that accumulates a lot of water from rainfall and snow melt. It's a beautiful area. Nice, hefty Jeffrey Pines here. Not the tallest I've ever seen, but definitely, uh, definitely a lot of these are well over 100 feet tall. And this is dry, this is dry Southern California, right next to a desert, right next to a desert. Just hop, skip, jump over this ridge probably. You'll find yourself uh, probably in Joshua trees, I would think. Not that I've ever done that. I've never been over there, but... And they also got knob cone pines over here, too. I did a spotlight on those last week in the San Bernardino Mountains. Here they, uh... They're planted by the Forest Service, I assume. And they have a propensity to naturalize when fire comes through. Beautiful wash. Actually, if I just walk a few more feet on the other side of this little wash, I will actually be up by the PCT. PCT cuts through here. But I just wanted to branch off and hang out underneath these tall Jeffrey Pines for a while. I don't know how much memory I have left in my card because I've been filming a lot today. A lot of video. Let's see. Okay. That PCT would be over here. Huh. Alright, I guess I was wrong. I know I crossed it on the way down the wash. I'm actually right near the, the road. The road is just over this little mound. But I know the trail comes through here. But I saw it! <laughs> It'll be down here! Words and even video even this video can't do justice. Here's a trail right here. Here's a PCT. A little further up than I thought. 
this way to Mexico, this way to Canada. There's also very interesting looking coulter pines around here too. Some that look very upright, looking like looking like pond, young ponderosa pines when they're really young. I don't think this is one of them, but this guy right here, it's a really young, narrow one. That's actually a coulter pine with a single leader and everything. Short needles. So definitely Definitely did a double take when I came up, when I passed this tree, when I was walking on the paved part of the road, I was thinking to myself, that's a colder pine? Well, this one is too, right here. <clears throat> There's the evidence right there, those big golden cones. Yeah, the needles are a little bit shorter than I usually see on coulter pines. Coulter pines usually have some pretty long needles. That flannel bush, Vermontodendron, Californicum. Beautiful shrub. A couple months this thing is going to be lit. I'm telling you. I've done some video around here in June when this place is completely lit up with those huge yellow flowers with those bright, brilliant, lemony, yellow, waxy sepals. Or teeples? Teeples, I should say. They're teeples. They then become these little little seed capsules that are really hairy and bristly and can make your skin itchy. It's not going to, I mean, unless you're super sensitive, I wouldn't worry about causing a rash, but you'll feel the bristles, and the bristles will be kind of irritating on the skin. Yeah, a lot of these are coulter pines over here, actually. Yeah, this is the PCT right here. But I have a, a few knobcone pines over here. I know I've done video up on along the paved portion of uh, Sulphur Springs Road. That's the name of the Forest Service Road that comes here, the official name. But also has an official forest number too. I think it's 5N04 or something like that. I think it is. But then we've got a birch leaf mountain mahogany. So again. When flannel bush is near, usually means the high desert's near too. So seeing single leaf pinion and uh, flannel bush, you know you're usually, not always, but usually getting pretty close to the edge of the desert, or at least the high desert. Yeah, I see another pinion pine down in the wash. But incredible scenery here. Love the trees, the shrubs. These old flannel bush thickets right here. You tell these have been around for a long time. See, I'm on the drier side. I'm on the south-facing slope here, so that's why it's pretty much shrub, sh shrubs, chaparral shrubs, and fierce, beautiful, beautiful and fierce chaparral yuccas. You got this little mini copse of. Uh, Pinus coulteri, coulter pine. Like a little, almost like a dog hair thicket of them. So there's a lot of competition between these trees. These trees might be much older than you think, than I think, for that matter, because uh, it's a lot of competition. A lot of pines, uh, they grow, pine family trees, they grow extremely slowly when bunched and bundled together. But once there's an opening, then they can start skyrocketing. Some beautiful trees. Some of these culture pines have more green in their needles, and some of them have a bit of a grayish green. It's another thing I find pretty fascinating over here. Of course, with the growth of Jeffrey pines, there is the potential for hybrid pines. Coulters and Jeffreys are yellow pines. They're in the Ponderosa subsection of the pine family. Um, hybridization, hybridization is supposed to be pretty rare, from what I've read. It's supposed to be pretty rare, but it happens. Saw evidence of it earlier on a hike today. Saw evidence of it a couple times, actually. Over here, it starts getting lusher. It's got that north-facing slope. And you start running into big cone Douglas fir. Sugar pine. Of course, more Jeffrey, but yeah, a lot of sugar pines start mixing in. 
See those over there? Sugar pines. These over here are big cone Douglas firs. On camera, they look very similar. And of course, here on the drier side, the coulter pines. And here's the PCT, where, see, the PCT comes up here, then starts going up this way. This is the northbound way where I'm pointing. And then these are some pretty decent sized coulter pines up the up this canyon here a little bit. It's a beautiful place over here. And I see another pinion sapling down there. So you will you'll see a couple pinion pines when you drive down this way. See what this is Sulphur Springs Road. If you keep going along the pavement from uh, Santa Clara Divide Road, you pass the Angeles Christian, Angeles Crest Christian Camp, Three Points Trailhead, and you keep following it until it goes up around Angeles Crest Christian Camp, and then it starts going down in elevation. Yeah, stay on the pavement. You're gonna bear right at a junction with 3N17. 3N17 is a dirt road that heads away from you up towards Pacifico, and that's called Alder Saddle, that area where that junction is. But you bear right and you stay on the pavement, keep going downhill, eventually you get to this place. It's supposed to be called Pinion Flat, but it's not flat over here. <laughs> so I don't know where the name came from. I mean, does it, does it matter? No. It's a beautiful place. And yeah, you can see, it's all just wall-to-wall -wall chaparral once you get up towards that side. I'm taking some fire breaks going up this way before... I believe that's uh, peak 6178 there. I did a, uh, I did a hike up that last year. I think that's it right there. Did a hike up there last June. Beautiful hike up there. Short, very steep. Uh, so you're gonna need to take your time. But yeah, fantastic area. That's the parking area. That's basically the last of the drivable portion of Sulphur Springs Road. If you bear left, it becomes a dirt road that's gated and it heads up, heads up, starts curving off that way. And in the gate over here, uh, if you, you can only, you can basically only walk or use your bike over here now. You can't drive it because the gate's always closed. Been here a few times, it's always closed. If you hike down this way a little ways, you can get to Sulphur Springs Campground, which is just barely at 5,000 feet. So it's a couple hundred feet down elevation from here. Wow. Female Cyclops lizard. Beautiful lizard. Female Cyclops lizard. So yeah, there's the paved portion that goes down to Sulphur Springs Campground. And like I said, around this corner, here's a gate. Up here we got our Desert Sea Anothis. Sea Anothis Greg E. Fairly common in this area. It's also common, it's common in, common near uh, the south facing slopes across Angeles Crest Highway from Waterman Mountain. It's more of a south facing slope chaparral plant. Got these old, really old Artemisia tridentatas here. These are the old, really old, gnarled, aged, gnarled aged sagebrushes. Beautiful. Love how they get old and they get these gnarly, twisted trunks. The coastal sagebrush, California sagebrush, Artemisia californica which grows in the coast and lower foothills, can also get very old like that too. They're a close relative of uh, Artemisia trientata. It's Artemisia californica. They can also, with age, get some of these trunks, usually not quite as large as these. These are some large trunks for uh, sagebrush, or a lot, much larger than I normally see for California, Californica. But trientata, I think, lives can, can live much longer and grow much larger. But then again, like I said, I've seen California sagebrush uh, with, and they, they don't have uh, their leaves are a lot uh, a lot uh, their lobes are a lot more thready like, like narrow and thready 
whereas these are wider and three tooth Tridentata. And they both smell quite a bit different. They're both got a, a camphor type aroma, but Artemisia Tridentata and Artemisia Californica do smell different. And they both smell very good. Honestly, I prefer the scent of Artemisia Californica. Uh, I don't know, I, I grew up with that, living in San Diego and hiking in little canyons and stuff. If you live, in, if you live near uh, Claremont and Kearney Mesa and stuff like that, University City, you'll know what I'm talking about because you've got these little open space canyons in between the neighborhoods and there's a lot of California sagebrush growing in those canyons and the smell of that is intoxicating. you got to mix it with black sage, white sage occasionally. Uh, I grew up with that scent, and it's a scent that uh, I've always been in love with. But this smells really nice, too, I'm not going to lie. Artemisia Tridentata come here after a rainfall, especially a summer rain when a summer thunderstorm comes over. Must be an unbelievable, unbelievable smell, because the smells carry more, seem to carry more in, uh, in warm, like warm, humid, tropical rains that we sometimes get here during the summertime. Incredible over here. I just love it. Beautiful area. Highly recommend coming out here to hike. You can hike the PCT. If you really want to go off trail, you can do what I do. You can scramble up to these peaks, which I do on a reg semi-regular basis. Or you can just come here and chill out or go kick it in Sulphur Springs. But I guess that'll do it for this video. You know, maybe find something else to point out. Maybe a spotlight on trees video or spotlight on shrubs video. And uh, we'll see you on the next next video. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.